Hey, what's up? My name is Justin and welcome back to 65 Drums. Today I'm doing my full review of Sensory Percussion. This is a very powerful set of triggers and software that let you do nearly anything you can imagine when it comes to hitting a drum. Just one of these triggers has 10 zones, lets you do things like stack tons and tons of sounds on each one of the zones, blend between the zones, give all kinds of different effects on each individual zone, a lot of automation, a lot of ways of controlling the sound, and it just it's gonna take a little bit for me to explain what this system can do. We're gonna start off with the unboxing experience, do the setup process, and then talk about what it can do and who it might be for, the pros and the cons. Okay, let's talk about what comes in the box. The first thing you get is the trigger itself. You get a sticker or two. You get a clear container full of these metal V-shaped things, and then you get a little confirmation card that comes with a code that lets you actually use the software to begin with. After you buy the first trigger, then you can buy the cheaper versions of the trigger that don't come with the software because you already own it. So here's what the overall setup process looks like. The first thing is write down all the serial numbers for each one of your triggers. The second thing is get one of those metal V-shaped things that comes in the box and apply that to the drum head wherever you want the trigger to be. Once you do that, you can actually snap off the V section part of it because that's more of a, like a guide or a ruler to make sure you're putting the dots in the right spot away from the rim. Next, you're gonna to wanna to put the trigger directly over that metal dot. Make sure it doesn't shift around because if it goes too far to the right or too far to the left, you could lose sensitivity and overall accuracy while you're playing later on. To make this a little bit easier, they actually have a built-in flashlight on the bottom of the trigger. So even if you're in a really dark concert environment, you can still recenter the trigger no problem because you can see what you're doing. This trigger system is bigger than most other ones out there in the market. For size comparison, here is this trigger versus a Roland RT30HR and a D-Drum Red Shot. Now those sensors are different because they're using a piezo-based system and this is using a magnet-based system, but it is quite a bit larger. One of the nice things about this trigger system is that there is no separate kick drum trigger and a separate tom and snare drum trigger. They just cut a very tall slit into the top of the trigger design in order to make it fit on every kind of shell out there, which is very nice. So the next step is you need to get an XLR cable and connect this trigger over to an audio interface. The XLR connection and the audio interface are not included in the box, so you gotta make sure that you buy this in a bundle with an audio interface, or you can just buy one separately. There's a couple of things the audio interface needs to do though in order for it to work properly. The first thing, which is a little bit more obvious, is the fact that you need to have a big enough audio interface. I have four triggers, but my biggest audio interface only has two inputs, so I can only use two of those triggers. The next thing is make sure that you can turn on phantom power and then switch all of the inputs over to instrument instead of line. Also make sure to turn off direct monitoring because if that's turned on, you'll hear the raw audio alongside all the sounds coming from your computer. Now, while I was testing this whole system to make this review, I tested these triggers with two audio interfaces, a Focusrate 2i2, and then a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Model 2. But there's one very interesting thing that I discovered that I really was not expecting. So this audio interface has three inputs, but unfortunately, I could only use two of them because this audio interface is designed more for mobile recording. It can record to a thumb drive and an SD card and 32-bit audio, and it's awesome. It's a very nice system. But the unfortunate thing is that over USB, it can only send two channels. So just make sure you look at the specs of whatever audio interface you're about to buy to make sure it has enough lines over USB as well as enough inputs, because those two things aren't always the same. The next step is connecting the audio interface over to your computer. This works either with Mac or with PC. Unfortunately though, it wasn't working that great with my particular Windows computer. It's a very powerful computer, but it seems to not do very well at low latency audio tasks. So I went out and bought a cheap MacBook Pro from 2012, and it's running the program beautifully. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna have to do is go to the Sensory Percussion website, create an account, and then input the code that you got in the box. There's two versions of the program that you can download. You can either download the standalone version or the plugin, or both. The standalone version doesn't need anything else. You can start playing right away just with that one program. The plugin version means that you can open up this program inside of your favorite DAW. The plugin version was a little bit confusing to me. You have to route all the raw audio inputs of the interface and then somehow assign those to go through this uh, sensory percussion plugin. And I just got a little bit confused during the setup and I found that just using the standalone version worked for me. Okay, so once you open up the program, the first thing you're gonna have to do is input all the serial numbers of all the triggers because they wanna know what you're using. The next thing you have to do is go over to the audio settings 
and then select your audio interface and decide where you want the sound to go. Okay, so now that all that is done, your setup is almost complete. Now you have to train the software to recognize you hitting different parts of the drums. The reason why you don't have to train a regular drum trigger like a Roland RT30HR is that it has dedicated sensors for each one of the zones. And so that's how your drum module can tell instantly without much programming required. But with this system, there's only one sensor for 10 zones on the snare. So here's what it's like to set up the trigger system. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over here to the bottom and select channel one. You're telling it how big the drum head is and what type of drum head it is, whether or not it's mylar or mesh. Now to train each one of the triggers, you'll select whichever one you wanna train, and then you'll go to one of the zones and train each zone individually. So I would click on center and then press learn. After I do that, I just hit the center like 10 or 20 times and now it is trained. And then I go and program the rim tip zone and then the rim shot edge zone and the dampened zone and the stick shot zone and the edge zone and the rim shot center zone and the cross stick zone, the rim shoulder zone and the shell zone. All right, so that is the initial setup and what you need to get up and running. All right, so let's talk about what the system can actually do. This won't be a full feature list because that would take an hour, but here's a couple of things that you need to know about the system and what you can do with it. The first is the fact that it has so many zones. It's got 10 zones on the toms and snare and something like five or so on the kick drum. This is very, very powerful because number two, you can add basically an unlimited amount of sounds for each one of those zones. Maybe there is some sort of limit, maybe it's like 20 sounds per zone, I don't really know, but just do the math. If you have 10 sounds on each one of those 10 zones, that's 100 sounds on one snare in one kit. There's so many ways to actually activate those sounds that it becomes very, very powerful and the possibilities just multiply. It's not just like you hitting softer and you access one sound and you hit louder and you access another sound. What's really cool about the system is the fact that you have a lot of different modes to play with. So here's an example. Let's say that you're hitting the center of the drum and you tell the software, I want you to go through each sound in order. I want you to cycle through the sounds. This is very powerful because you could have a bunch of chords in order going through there and you could play an entire song on one zone by yourself. You can program all that to happen. 
or you can make it where all the sounds are just generated randomly. So it's just cycling randomly through all the sounds you have assigned to each of the individual zones. Another thing you can do is have a speed controller assigned to one of the zones or the entire drum set. So for example, you could do it where uh, if you play faster, it tunes the sound up, or if you play slower, the sounds bend downward in pitch. Or you could make it where the faster you play, the more reverb that you hear on the sound. When it comes to more basic stuff, like uh, assigning a trigger curve to the drum, that's something that it can do definitely, but you can assign a different trigger curve to all 10 zones on one drum. That's literally something I've never seen before. You can also do basic things like tuning the sounds up or down. You can actually like quantize sounds. You can also reverse sounds just with one button click and you can flip it back and forth and see what you like better. I also like the fact that there's blending modes for the sounds. It makes it a lot more immersive, especially on more electronic-y, like uh, note-based sounds. There's also a bunch of different effects that you can apply to the drums individually or all at once. You can have reverb on just one zone or the entire drum set. Another very useful feature is the fact that you can switch between kits by hitting a zone that you choose. So for example, you could assign a kit change by hitting the side of the shell. You just very naturally are switching between kits and no one really sees it happen. Okay, so as far as sounds go, there's a lot of free ones that come pre-included with the software. And I also believe they sent me some sort of link to download a bunch of extra free ones, but I haven't even touched those sounds yet. In addition, you can just implement whatever sounds that you have lying around on your computer or ones that you find online. You can just drag and drop whatever sounds you want into the program. Okay, so now let's move ahead to the next section of the video. What's it actually like to live with the system on the day to day? The setup process is kind of tedious and time consuming. There's a lot of different steps involved and a lot of things that just aren't included in the box. It's not like buying a Roland RT30HR or a D-Drum trigger. You plug it into a module and you're off to the races with hardly any setting adjustments required. If you don't take the time to learn how to do everything properly, you're not gonna have that much fun with the system and you're not gonna be able to do much with it. And there's stuff that even I don't know much about and I could be doing way more with the system than I currently am. The second thing that I immediately noticed while playing this is that it's just pure fun trying out all the different ways to hit a drum and the different effect chains that they have on everything and all the different unique ways that you can interact with the sounds is very, very interesting. But of course, that leads me to point number three. When you record yourself in the early days of using this system and you listen back to how you were playing, you had so much fun. But when you listen back, you realize you sound like a monkey hitting a keyboard with drumsticks. It sounds like you don't know what you're doing because you honestly do not. There's a lot of intentionality on when to hit certain parts of the drum and what effects to apply when and where. There's a lot that goes into this. And before you do all the planning, you're just gonna be messing around and it will sound absolutely insane. Of course, that's awesome. It's very fun to play around. But when doing recordings for this video, I found myself very frustrated. I also found that it took me a very long time to get used to precisely hitting the drum in different ways. If you are a little bit haphazard, you're gonna trigger random sounds like explosions and crap that will completely ruin whatever performance you're trying to put on. So there's a big difference between hitting the tip of your stick on the rim versus the shaft of your stick on the rim. And if you hit too hard, it'll think you're doing a rim shot, which is different from a shallow rim shot that takes a lot of work to get good at. And when you're really good at it, like uh, for example, there's a channel called Mason Self, and he freaking puts on entire songs with the system with just a handful of drums. but there's a lot of intentionality and a lot of planning that goes into it. And he's playing very precisely to pull off the different things that he pulls off in his videos. I highly recommend checking out that channel, Mason Self, because he just shows off all kinds of crazy things you can do with the system. And I'm also pretty surprised at how much they've packed into the software while leaving it relatively simple. They could have added lots of extra menus and lots of extra fluff, but I feel like there's a lot of intentionality that I've seen in the software to make it as simple and as easy to use as possible while adding lots and lots of features. And I appreciate that. Okay, let's jump ahead to pros and cons. So here's what the system is really good at and what it's not so good at. So on the good side, I like how many zones you can get out of these drums. 
I like how many sounds and how many effects that the software has. I love the sound layering, the sound blending. I love that the trigger is an all-in-one design that works on all drums. You don't have to have different types of triggers for the kick and the snare. I like that it works on Mylar or mesh drum heads. It works on Mac or PC. There is no proprietary drum module. You can use whatever kind of audio interface that you want. And I also like that it has MIDI in and out. But of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Here are the downsides of buying into sensory percussion. Here are the cons. The first is the overall pricing. This thing is very, very expensive to get up and running because not only is the trigger expensive, just one of them is 450 or a whole set is $1,000. You have to factor in all the other stuff you need that surrounds the trigger to get it up and running. You still have to get an audio interface and a whole set of cables, and that bumps up the price to $1,600. And that's like the price territory almost of a TD-17 KVX or a Mapex acoustic drum set with some okay cymbals. And that's not even including the price of the laptop that you may or may not have. The next downside of the system is the fact that you have to train the triggers and the overall tension of the drums can mess up the overall triggering if you let it get too loose. There's a big time investment also when learning this system. You can't just spend 30 minutes here or there and then all of a sudden you know how to do everything. You have to spend hours and hours really learning the system to pull the full potential out of it. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. If all you wanna do is trigger a couple of sounds on two zones, then you don't need to spend a ton of time learning how to use the system. But if you wanna fully access all of what the system can offer, there's gonna be a lot of time with you sitting, you know, watching tutorials or reading the manual, trying to figure this whole thing out. Another thing that I've been thinking about, and this really isn't sensory percussion's fault, but this system could be overkill for a lot of drummer's needs. If you just need to do something simple, have a clap sound on the snare, have an 808 kick drum sound on the kick drum, you can do that with two cheap red shot triggers and then a Roland TM2 drum module. There's like hardly any setup required. It's very, very easy to do. Drag the sounds on via an SD card. It's an all-in-one system. It didn't cost that much. Meanwhile, for that really simple use case, you could definitely use sensory percussion, but it would be like bringing a tank to a fist fight or like buying a Lamborghini to go 30 miles an hour. It definitely can do all that, but is it really required? Sensory percussion is a very powerful, flexible system that can literally do anything but that doesn't necessarily mean it's best for every situation out there. Okay, so that's the pros and cons list, but now bottom line, who exactly is this system for? In my mind, the best kind of drummer for buying into sensory percussion is someone who really likes to experiment with sounds. People who like to mess around with different, unique, strange sounds and like to change them in different ways via automation, via different ways of playing, different programming. People who love to experiment, that's who this is for. If you have very basic things you need to get done, like putting a clap sound on a snare, there are cheaper ways of doing it. By the way, if you do wish to purchase this system, I've linked to them down in the description below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that support the channel at no cost to you through Amazon. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. You're the real MVP. And especially thank you to the people on Patreon who helped make this video possible. See you all in a few.